and welcome to a new video. I thought that I would actually do some sort of a vlog or talk about my gray transition, my silver transition journey. I just thought I would talk about some of the things that I'm going through in case other people out there are going through something similar and thought that I would bring this up and share this with you and talk about my journey, talk about my issues. And if any of you wanna share your journey, your issues, things that you've been doing while you're transitioning your, to your gray hair, um, please leave those down below in the comments and we can all get a conversation going and commiserate or celebrate, whichever the case may be, maybe a little bit of both as we transition to our gray hair. So, to start with my gray journey, I was coloring my hair and I did have a strategy for eventually growing out my gray, but I'll start back at the beginning how I started getting into coloring my hair and that basically goes all the way back to cosmetology school and I started coloring my hair for the fun of it and when I was in cosmetology school, I was pretty young but I started graying when I was 21. So I was out of cosmetology school at that point. I was already in the salon and doing hair. And because I had already been coloring my hair just for the fun of it, I, I didn't pay much attention to a lot of the grays that I was getting in uh, until I was 26 and I was on maternity leave for about three or four months with my second child. And I started to notice uh, all of the gray that I had here at my sides and temples. This is where the highest concentration of grays are in my hair. And it was like that almost exactly this much when I was 26. And um, while I was on maternity leave, I didn't bother coloring my hair, which is how I kind of noticed that it was starting to get really really gray prior to that i just didn't because i was always coloring my hair because that's what you do when you're a hairdresser you see somebody with a really awesome hair color leave the salon and next thing you know you're like "Ooh, i think i want that color so that just kind of goes with the territory and i never really colored my hair to cover up the gray or because I didn't like the gray or because I felt that it made me look old or anything like that. I've never really equated gray hair with age because I see so many people gray really early. And even though there was a huge stigma around gray hair for a very long time, uh, that it's, you know, it makes somebody look old, especially women. Like men can get away with it. They've always been called like a silver fox or that it makes them look distinguished. And women have always kind of just, when they have gray hair, they get described as like looking like an old hag or an old witch or just old. Back then, uh, things were not favorable towards gray hair. And those of you who are right around my age, which is 48, you will know that that was the case. And these days gray, hair is a little bit more accepted. There are people actually coloring their hair, trying to get it to be gray when it's not gray. So it's nice that people are starting to embrace the gray and then it's no longer being seen as something that is just old uh, because there are a lot of people who do gray early and that is genetics. That's just something that happens. So I, like I said, I started noticing the higher concentration of grays when I was 26. And my dad kind of did that too. He grayed really quickly and then he kind of sat in a holding pattern for a while where he kept getting some grays in, but it wasn't a whole lot for a while. And then all of a sudden he started back up again and really, and really started graying quite a bit faster. And he now has a full head of silver hair, but he's also in his early seventies. My mom is also in her early seventies too, but she is still salt and pepper. She took a lot longer to get grays in. So I am following my dad's pattern and I do have grays up and through here, but as you can see, I don't have a line of demarcation up there because they're just, they're far and few between up at the top. I'm getting more of them now than what I had before, but not a whole lot more. Like I said, I had, I've had about this amount of gray hair since I was 26. It just, it, I've gotten a few more here and there over the years, but not a ton. Like the, the, the biggest problem and the biggest line of demarcation for between the color and my gray is right here. And this is, this is kind of what's bothering me. So 
I don't remember when I last colored my hair because what my plan was, since I had been coloring my hair and I had been coloring it the same as my natural, uh, so really dark, then my grays were really dark. And as you can see right now, the gray hair on the lengths is a little bit lighter. So it's still colored. It's not gray, but it's lighter than the rest of my hair. And that's because I've been coloring my hair with a demi-permanent for a while. And a demi-permanent cannot lift, it can only deposit. And it does fade a bit eventually. All hair colors eventually fade to a certain extent. And then the, with the demi, it can really only fade to your natural. Or in the case of my gray, it never really went faded back to gray, it kind of stained the gray. And I was totally fine with that. And I started to color it a little bit lighter each, and I just, I'm kicking the camera. Um, yeah, I'm sitting on the floor and it's getting on, my foot was falling asleep, so I'm moving around. Apparently this is also gonna be just like random blurts from Michelle as well as my silver hair journey and vlog. So to get back to the story, I would change my hair color formula slightly lighter every so many times that I would color my hair and I really didn't have any kind of set schedule. It was just when I felt like it was time to move it up to the next level and the whole, the whole strategy was going to be that I would keep doing this and keep making it lighter and lighter and lighter until it was really, there was not a whole lot of difference between the gray hair and the colored hair. And I was going to start switching it over from more of a warmer color, which it is right now, to eventually something that was cooler so that it would ease the transition and make growing it out a lot easier that I wouldn't have this big difference. Well, everything was going to plan until the last until I needed to color my hair again. So the last time that I colored my hair, like I said, I don't remember when that was because I really hadn't planned on it being my last time of coloring my hair. But then once my gray started growing out and I'm like, I really need to color my hair and I kept putting it off and putting it off. And then I finally just decided I don't really want to do this anymore. So I just stopped coloring my hair. I decided I wasn't going to do it anymore. I was tired of it. I color my own. It's kind of a pain in the butt. And I mean, I cut my own hair too. So I tend to procrastinate that as well, but that still needs to be done. But the coloring doesn't. I just decided I was done. I didn't really want to keep up with it anymore. And really since the only kind of line of demarcation that I have is underneath, I figured now was the time to kind of grow it out anyway because I don't have a line up top. I don't have, you know, a solid mass of gray up here. So this is a good time to do it and just let those silvers come through. Plus I kind of like how the silvers look up and through here because I like that they're just kind of standing out and blending in with my really dark hair. I love the contrast of the silver against the dark. And I'm also interested in seeing, cause you can kind of see through here where like I have ribbons of lighter hair. That's actually my gray hair that's still colored and it shows up kind of looking like a highlight. And that was the intent when I was coloring my hair is to have it look like that. Um, so it's going to be kind of peekaboo gray ribbons running through this lower part of my hair just because of how everything falls. And I think that's going to be really interesting to see and look at. And I'm really looking forward to getting there. But the problem is I'm bored. I am really bored. I haven't done any kind of really fun hair colors in a long time. Uh, once I retired from doing hair and I didn't have access to other people doing my hair for me, um, I just decided to go with something that was lower maintenance. And even though I could color my own hair and do all kinds of fun things to it, I just decided not to, and to just work on trying to slowly transition over into gray hair one day, eventually. It's been a long time since I've played with my hair color, and I used to do it all the time, uh, you know, being a hairdresser. Like I would change it every spring and fall, at least. And 
do all kinds of fun things with it. And one of the things that I'm looking forward to do with my gray hair is to put in like some of the really fun colors like blue or purple because with those colors, normally you have to pre-lighten your hair in order for it to show up in your hair. It wouldn't show up so much with my dark hair, but with the gray hair, I wouldn't have to pre-lighten anything. My gray hair will totally grab onto that color. So all of these silver strands will now all of a sudden become purple or blue or whatever color I decide to put in there. And I've thought about getting the hair makeup from Curlsmith just to have something temporary and play around with that. But the problem is that my hair has not grown out yet and all of this gray will take that color, even though it's a temporary color, it will take that color more vibrantly than the rest of it, even though the rest of it is still pretty light. So there will be a difference, probably not a super huge difference, but enough that it's going to bug me. And that'll just annoy me the entire time after my wash day while I have it on there. So I don't know, I might do that. I might not, I haven't decided, but that's my biggest struggle right now is boredom. I really, really want to play around with my hair color, do some fun things with it and do, I know that Moroccan oil also has like hair masks that are colored and they're temporary or, you know, semi-permanent. They just kind of wash out over time. So all of these things are just dangling in front of me and I really, really want to do them. But I also know that, like I said, the gray is going to come out really vibrant. The rest of it's not. And that'll annoy me. So that is my frustration right now with growing out my gray hair. My biggest frustration is just that overall I'm really bored with my hair and, um, or at least my hair color and want to do something about it. But at the same time, I don't want to do anything with it. That's going to set me back. I don't want to highlight my hair because that's one more thing I'm going to have to grow out. And temporary hair color is probably the better of my options. But yeah, so that's where I'm at right now is just being really frustrated and really wishing that this would all be over with and I could just get rid of it all and be gray and be done with it. And as you can see, it's grown out quite a bit. Like it's right about here. So that's, that's a good amount of outgrowth, but I've got a lot, you know, my hair is really long, so I've got a ways to go before I can cut off all the color and just have the gray and be done with it. As far as any sort of other issues that I've been having with my silver hair. I really haven't had any and I believe I've mentioned this before if you watch some of my other videos that my gray hair isn't different than the rest of my hair. It's pretty much the same so I don't have any kind of texture changes or even curl pattern changes really. I mean I have multiple curl patterns all over my head but my grays are no more or less curly than the darker hair next to it. So that's not really an issue. It's just the biggest thing is just being really kind of bored with my hair color. And I have been for quite some time because I stopped playing with it. And I just want the whole thing to be done so that I can actually see my grays, have my silvers running down the entire length of my hair. And I can finally see some difference and have something different and then be able to temporarily color them or to color them maybe um, semi-permanently or even demi-permanently with like a purple or a blue or you know something something kind of fun like that. I just think that that would be a really fun way to kind of play around with the gray hair and then wash it out and they do make color removers to pull those those fashion colors out of the hair. Malibu C makes one so I can get my hands on that and just when I'm done with a blue or purple or pink or whatever kind of hair I can just wash it out with that so yeah that's probably my biggest complaint with my grow out is the boredom and really wanting it to just be done already and I think probably anybody growing out their hair their gray hair is probably going through something similar with just really wanting it to be done already and just be over it and not be looking at this two-tone thing going on like that on, you know, where you've got the gray and then you have the color on the ends. 
so I'm sure I'm not the only one who's really kind of frustrated and over it. So that is my vlog slash rant about my silver hair journey and also an overview of my silver hair journey, how it came to be, how I finally decided that this was time to do it. It just, it really was kind of a last minute spur of the moment decision and basically rested on laziness for not wanting to have to color my own hair anymore. Um, so anyway, leave, like I said, leave your thoughts down in the comments down below. Why did you decide to start going gray? Why did you decide on the particular time that you went gray? Did you decide to do it during the time of COVID, during lockdowns, when you couldn't get in to get your hair colored, so you figured you might as well grow it out anyway. What was your motivation behind finally deciding to go gray and when you decided to do it? And then um, just let me know some of the, the thoughts or whatever you have been having as you've been going through it because I'm pretty sure that a lot of us are having some of these same feelings about being frustrated or bored or just want it done and over with or maybe even some apprehension too about what are we gonna look like with gray hair? And I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wonder what I'm gonna look like with gray hair because I don't think that the cooler tones of silvers and grays really look so great against my skin tone. I think that's probably just more of a me thing. I prefer warmer tones in general uh, overall. So that might just be my own personal preference. So I do have that. I have misgivings about that as well. But I think a lot of us too are wondering, is this going to make me look a lot older? And what is it going to look like with curly hair? Is it going to look a little too frizzy and and a little too, I don't know, like to use some of the terms that I heard women with long gray hair being called uh, back when I was younger, like witchy or an old hag or something like that. Terrible names. Like why? Why do we need to call women these horrible names just because they want to have long gray hair? Long gray hair can be absolutely beautiful. Long gray curly hair can be absolutely beautiful. There's no reason it can't be. There's no reason that it needs to have these derogatory names attached to them. We shouldn't have to look witchy or frizzy or, or you know, like an old hag or something. So, but I'm sure I'm not the only one who probably has some of this stuck in your head because of hearing it while growing up. I mean, I just, I heard stuff like that from my parents, from my grandparents. So just if any, just anything, any thoughts at all that you have about misgivings with going gray or anything like that, leave them down below. If you have any questions about going gray, leave those down below. I can most certainly either address them in the comments or create an entire video answering those questions. I can do maybe like a Q&A type video where you leave questions about going gray down below in the comment section and then I'll make a video answering all of those questions. So yeah, let's just have a discussion and let's talk about our gray hair. Either the pluses, the minuses, the good, the bad, the ugly. I really think that it is great to embrace what you naturally have going on instead of constantly hiding it. Same with, you know, wearing your hair naturally curly. Why not let it go naturally gray as long as you, you know, it's there. Just let it be. So I really think that that's a positive step forward. But I also know that I am struggling for all the reasons mentioned earlier, and I'm probably not the only one. So let's just sit and talk about it and let's help each other through growing this out and try to make it a fun experience that we can all do together. So thank you for listening to my vlog slash rant about gray hair and if you like this video, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.